In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can use a list item to develop a report that has groupings and displays details directly under that grouping. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is open SQL Server Data Tools. So you can see I have SQL Server Data Tools open now. Then the next step, you would create a new reporting services project using SQL Server Data Tools. I've already created one, but if you haven't, just go ahead and create one. Then um, you'll need to create a data source. In this particular demonstration, I'm using Contoso Schools. You can download that from my blog site if you don't have a copy of it. So I created a shared data source to that database. And then the next thing you need to do is create a shared data, so data set. Um, the data set actually uses a query that I wrote here. You can get that data set from the blog that you're obtaining the video from. Okay. With the shared data set created, we're going to go ahead and create a report. So right click on the folder label report, select the item name add, then select new item. Um, in the list of available templates, go ahead and choose report. And we're going to call this one student behavior details. Okay. Then click add. Now the report is created. So since we've created a shared data set, shared data source, the only thing you need to do now is go ahead and add the shared data set um, instead of adding the data source, then the data set. So right click on the folder labeled data sets in the report data section. If report data is not open, click in on the report design surface itself, go to view and go all the way to the bottom and choose report data. You can also click control alt D and it'll open report data. Okay. So back on the data set, so we're going to call this guy student behavior details. I believe you can't use spaces in the data set name. It'll get angry at us. Um, and then choose that shared data set and click OK. Now you can see all the columns that are available in the uh, data set that we've added. The first thing you need to do is open up the toolbox. And you can see I've opened it up here. If not, go to view and find toolbox in the lists right there or control alt x that'll get it open also um, and then drag a list item over to the design surface okay i'll just format it just a little bit perfect the next thing you need to do is press f4 and that'll open the properties window so what you want to do is click this guy in the middle and then click right there on that square item right there and then locate in the general section of the properties window data set expand it and select the data set that we've created okay now we're ready to go the next step you want to do is if you look right at the bottom of the screen you'll notice two sections row groups and column groups right click on details in the row group section and go to group properties and change the name from details to schools and then click add from the new drop down box labeled Groupon that's created, go ahead and select school and click OK. All right. So you'll repeat this step a couple of times because we're going to um, have embedded list controls inside of list controls inside of list controls. The next step is to go ahead and drag a text box from the toolbox into the list box, okay? The list object item list item and I'm going to format it just a little bit okay and then choose you see this little field list icon go ahead and click it and select school just bold this just a little bit and increase the font great and let's make the design surface just a little bigger and increase the size of this text box great all right so we're getting going here and let's go ahead and preview this report take a quick preview just so we can see what we have um, so far and I like to do that just in case I encounter any errors I'll know exactly what changed excellent so now we see each school um, a distinct listing of each school that's part of that query the next thing you want to do is add another list box directly inside of the the list box that we already created so go ahead and grab that list I keep calling it a list box it's just a list item um, from the two box let's go ahead and format it a little bit and the step that we where we change the details grouping in the row group section, we're going to repeat that one more time. So right click on details, go to group properties, 
We're going to call this one locations. We'll click add. We'll select location from that drop down list and we'll click OK. And what we're going to do is very similar to what we did before. We're going to grab, the grab a text box, drag it into the design surface. A little format in here. Click on that fill list icon and select select location. Okay, and we'll just italicize this guy just so we'll know where we start. All right, preview the report one more time. So now what we see is for each school, you see the different locations. So if I go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, you see how they vary a little bit. So we'll go back to design view. We'll increase our design surface just a little bit. Click over here in this left section so we can increase the size of this guy a little bit and same thing here so we're going to add one more list box list item drag it in here and let's put it over here just a little tab over expand it out just a little bit now one more time we're going to repeat the steps on the row group the detail section in the row group and what we're going to do is change this one to event underscore type Click Add, select Event Type, click OK, drag the text box, we'll format, great, and do that guy just like that, select the Event Type, we'll expand this out just a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is grab another text box, drag it over into that last list box that we created and right next to the the event type text box I'm gonna drop this guy over here and expand it out just a little bit and then in the field list we're gonna choose behavior that's like our aggregated um, value and right click on this because I want to format this just a little bit um, and choose um, properties and go to number and just give that guy a number. We don't want any decimal places. So now let's preview the report. And what you'll see is we'll have three different grouping levels, school, location, and then the event type. And then each event type has a corresponding value, which represents the number of events um, that's occurred for a specific location at a specific school. Now, what we want to see is directly below this event type, the details um, for each one, the student name and the date it happened. So what we're going to do is directly inside of the event type list box, we're going to grab a matrix, drag it in here, move it over just a little bit, and then we're going to drag the student name, then we're going to drag the date, Drag it right after the student name. You see that little blue bracket bar? Drop it right there. And if we wanted to see the number of events, the number of behaviors, you can add that right in the data um, section. And the next step, what we're going to do is right click on the um, table here and go in our properties window. If the property window isn't open, press F4. Scroll to the bottom. Locate the visibility section. Select true. And then what we're going to do is we're going to expand the toggle item one. Click in that cell right to the right of toggle item. Expand it. Look for behavior. Select behavior. Now let's run this report. Essentially what we're doing, we're hiding this and making it toggle, make allowing whenever you click the some behavior, this column, it'll show the details of it. Click preview. Let the report run. Now what you see is you have Olive High School, the school, the location that the event happened, each individual event, and now if I click the little plus sign next to the number, you'll see the students and the date that it happened and the number of behaviors for a given student. Now I don't like that date, so I'm going to go ahead and format that date just a little bit. I'll go back to the design, right click on the date, go to text box properties, select number, choose date, choose the default format that's selected already, click OK, and preview it allow the report to run. If we expand this guy, you'll see that the date is nicely formatted for a given event type. Okay, and that's it. So if you have any questions or concerns regarding this video, as always, please feel free to email me at pleblanc at sqlunch.com. Thanks.